Let me teach you a Hindi word. Say Jai Masiki. Can you say Jai Masiki? That means praise the Lord. So, my dear fellow Indians, my family, my spiritual family, it is such a pleasure and delight to be able to stand and share the result of your hard work. You know, ignore whatever introduction was given to me about me, but think about that child, that girl who was born in the heart of Calcutta, in the city of, I don't know if you have heard of us about this name, it's called Goddess Kali. You know, that's called, uh, one of the gods, goddesses in India, the powerful one who is supposed to be in charge of all the other gods and goddesses in Hinduism. I was born in a family of the highest caste, in the family of the Brahmin. My grandfather was a freedom fighter. You know, I growing up in a place, in, and my family, they were very well to do, extremely well educated. And as I was growing up, I was a proud Brahmin. I was a proud Hindu, and I used to think, these Christians, you guys, you guys don't understand anything. Because growing up, I used to believe a philosophy that was taught by Ramakrishna, who believed, one of the Hindu reformers said, that it's all same. God is one, and you call him Christ, and these guys call him Allah, and we call him Krishna, and it's all the same. But you guys are too proud to understand that. So I hated missionaries with a passion. <laughs> you know, I wanted to do nothing about it. We used to celebrate Christmas, Hindu, uh, you know, all the gods and goddesses, all the, um, all the festivals. And because we thought Jesus was one of the Hindu gods, a good guru. You know, we loved him, but we hated Christians. Because Christians are alcoholics. They are all into what Hollywood rejects. So I hated Christians in that way. But I respected Jesus just like all the Hindus growing up in India. Growing up, it was so hard for me to, uh, you know, every year in Hindu schools, a Gideon, like this man, would come to our school and hand out New Testament. I would be like, no. And I didn't care. I, we had enough gods and goddesses. I didn't need to, like, you know, read your books. So I did not want to do anything with Christianity. But God took me from that Hindu school and I went to a Christian Methodist school where I really never heard the gospel per se or it never really sinked in. And one of the days, you know, I had a friend, who I got to meet a friend, a Catholic friend, and I thought, what do Christians believe? I know all about what Hindus believe. I was a proud Hindu, you know, learning all the Hindu Vedas and scriptures and everything. And I was thinking, what does Hindu, uh, Christians believe? And I had a, my mother, when I was very young, had given me a children's Bible with pictures and stories, which I never wanted to read because I did not like Christians. And after my 10th grade, while I was waiting for my results, as I was going to that, uh, started going to that Christian school, my mother used to say, why do you not read this book? You are an avid reader. Why would you not read this book? And I, I used to say, no, I don't want it. I don't want it. My mother started telling me that, just read it for the money's sake that I bought this for as a Christmas gift for you. And I said, no. But because she was nagging, I read it. I told my Catholic friend, hey, I read the Bible. I knew that was a lie because that was not the Bible. You know, as I said that, I started feeling so guilty. I was like, why did I tell a lie? Why can't I just be honest? And I realized, you know, this is so weird. And I kept feeling guilty until another day, a Gideon like this man showed up. And this time he gave me a New Testament and I received it. I thought, if I read this book, my words will become true. At least it's a part of the Bible. So I started reading the New Testament. And as I read, I came to 
Romans chapter 5 and verse 7 and 8. Initially, I thought Jesus is like one of the gurus. He taught good things as I went through the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I thought Jesus is one of the gurus. He, you know, bad things always happen to good people, so they put him on the cross. But as I came to the book of Romans, I realized from chapter 1 that how far my community had gone away from God, making idols. I remember the time when we ha- celebrate one of the goddesses uh, festival and we remember how my ancestors made the first idols. It was my ancestors. So my society, my ancestors, my caste I was so proud of had gone away from God. Chapter 2, you know, growing up, I was dedicated to that goddess Kali I spoke about. I used to do meditation from the age of two. I used to do fasting to the gods from the age of five. And I thought I was very religious and I will surely go to heaven. But guess what? When I read chapter two of Romans and it says, and all religious people have fallen short of God's glory as well. We have all sinned. And then I came to chapter three. And it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm like, if God is holy and all the fruits and flowers and money I'm giving to all the gods, how can he accept it? If he is accepting it, he is not holy. If he is just overlooking my sins, he cannot be a righteous judge. And if he's not the righteous judge, he cannot be God. And I'm like, then why am I worshiping these idols? I kept reading chapter 4 of Romans. I'm like, I have no idea who David and Abraham are. Skip chapter (laughs) 5. Chapter 5 and verse 7. Scarcely for a righteous man one would die. Perhaps for a godly man one would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. It was not that he was a good person and bad things happened to good people. And it was not like the Hindu gods and goddesses who would come and judge the dis- and destroy the wicked. It was God who created me, the true and living God whom we cannot see, who loved me enough to die for me. And that's the true God. Because that's the real love. My dear Gideons, think about this. You know, somebody who is just worshipping all the idols and trying to please the gods, it was like heaven crashing apart. I'm like, how can you love me so much, God? How? And I went to the bathroom. I didn't want anybody to see. I started crying because people would think I'm crazy. I mean, why would you be crying reading this book? But the Lord opened my heart. And as I read, it says, you who believed have been called and been justified. I knew reading the scriptures that I believed even though I did not know one single believer at that time. My parents thought, you know, my family thought somebody brainwashed me. But guess what? You know, I knew the true God loved me. It took me almost a year and a half to find the first believer. But I always wondered, why God, why would I not know one single believer? But thank God, because you know who discipled me? It was the word of God that you put in my heart. It put in my life and it was the Lord discipling me and finally the Lord as he helped me to join a church in Kolkata you know when I tried to reach out to somebody in the internet in Michigan a lady through that lady through her pastor through uh, another missionary back to, to who contacted somebody in South India who contacted a church in Kolkata so that I could go to a church 20 minutes away from my home um, I, I, I believed and the, I said, God, what do you want for me? And he said, go spread the word. Go share the word. And my Gid- fellow Gideons, you helped me to help, help now others, others who are in the darkness like me, to share the word. Today, among the homeless in Ohio, or whether through internet, I'm sure as the Lord is helping me to reach out to different parts of the world, the Indians and Australians and uh, people in London, they're reaching out and saying, tell us more about the Lord. It is because of that one faithful Gideon or those faithful Gideons who did not keep, did not stop going to the schools and sharing gospel. 
Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you for the work you do. Do not ever give up. Be more passionate. And, you know, the Lord bless you and use you more. And may God raise more Gideons like you. May God bless you.